Coming up on this episode of Juliana and Bill. We are in Dr. Sabaka's office waiting to get the results to hear if we're pregnant. There he is. For you not to tell me as just a friend was very hurtful. It's going to require sacrifice on both our parts, whether we want to move forward with it or whether we don't. It's an emotional roller coaster. Now that it's a reality, I'm scared. Good. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like um, my tummy's a little, like, um, solid. But I, I don't know if that's from the shots or uh -huh. what that's from, you know? Yeah, you get swollen. Yeah, 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 a little crampy. So normal. Okay. But no period. No period. Wow. I think I'm pregnant, so. Good. We did IUI, which is intrauterine insemination, 12 days ago here in Chicago. So we are in Dr. Sabaga's office waiting to get the results to hear if we're pregnant. I know you think I'm crazy, but... I mean, you're, you're very excited. I think we gotta, we gotta manage your excitement. Don't rain on my parade, Rancic. I know, I'm not, I'm not, but I, you're just, I what? see you jumping, you're, you're, you're I'm jumping out of yourself. I can't even sleep, I'm so excited, honey. I've been waiting for this day forever. Our life could change in 20 seconds. But at the same time, my heart is pounding, beating out of my chest, because I've been feeling very different lately. So I think that we're gonna get some good news. The results will definitely change our lives. <sighs> there he is. Wow. Um. I'm sorry. No. no. It's not gonna. Wow. It's okay. Wow. I feel very strongly that you will be successful. How do you know? Because I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, but we've been trying for a while, Dr. Sabaga. Mm -hmm. We have been, you know? I mean, it's just not working. OK, come and give her love. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Come here, Come here, baby. Come here. Well, I mean, we talk okay. about it all the time. It just feels like, you know, it's just not working. We're going to be all right, I'm telling you. No, but, no, but seriously, you know, I mean, we, like when I spoke to you that time, you know, it just, it just feels like, you know, I just want to know, I wonder if anything's wrong with us. Everything's been checked off the list, so now it's just time. And I know you like things to happen immediately. But and Bill, it's not, now. I do like immediately, but this has been a while. I'm definitely very shocked, like beyond shocked. Um, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe that we aren't pregnant. Like, I don't understand how that happens. I mean, I don't know, you know? It's gonna be okay. Let me explore something with you. Mm -hmm. If we did a simple cycle, and what we did last month was a simple cycle, mm -hmm. so just a little bit more medicine, mm -hmm. do everything again, we still are flirting with a 20% number, okay? Right. If we're not successful by next month, it really is time to move on. Mm -hmm. And the move on is an IVF cycle. In IVF, they take the guy's sperm and the woman's eggs, and they put them together in a dish. After five days, they plant them back in you. So with IVF, I hear that the chances of getting pregnant are much higher. I think that's helpful because we know that it's not the end. You will get pregnant. I mean, I'm telling I you. I feel really strong yeah. about sure. that. I really feel good that it's going to happen. Okay. I really do. Didn't happen this time. It'll happen next time. I don't think we should do IUI again. So we'll look into IVF. Aren't you disappointed? Very, yeah. But I mean, I think you gotta, we gotta just let it go. Just relax, let's not think about it. It will happen. I believe that. All right? You're a good woman, you're gonna be a good mom. Thanks, honey. You're right. a good dad. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Hey, I was talking with Ryan just yeah. a little bit ago. 
we were talking about getting a list together of sort of discussion points when yes. there are those, you know, spontaneous moments. Right. I just found out I'm going to be working on the red carpet for the premiere of the new Twilight movie. It's good to get back to L.A. and back to work because my job is definitely a great distraction to all the stress I've been dealing with lately. So the, our writers are currently working on that. Got it. So I will um, send that to you and Matt just as soon as I get it. Yeah, see, Jacoby, are you paying attention? Yeah. Matthew normally is so happy and full of life and in the best mood, but lately he's just been very distracted. He's been very negative. I've never seen Matthew act like this. Bill, how are you, brother? Good morning, my brother. Good, how are you? Good to see you. Long time, pal. Paul Reeder is the president of PR Entertainment. He's put together uh, three speakers, myself, Chris Gardner, and James Van Prague, to speak at this big event at the Las Vegas Hilton. This first event is critical, because if it is a success, there will be many more of these Take Control events to come. I brought some things to share with you. Yeah, if you'd like. Here is the print that I thought turned out really good, so you oh, can yeah. kind of take this a look. Nice. Three of the country's top experts share their winning strategies for transformation. This is pretty critical. You know, the Las Vegas Hilton's our kickoff, and that's going to set the tone for any future dates. So if we fill the Las Vegas Hilton, it's going to be a lot easier to go to Arizona, or I know Connecticut had an interest. Green Bay has an interest, Albuquerque, Palm Springs, San Diego. Perfect. So some good West Coast dates. Yeah. You know, for me to do it, you know, it requires me being on the road and away from Juliana, which isn't easy, but if I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. Hey, Matthew. How's it going? Good. What's going on with you? Work and work and work. Work. I don't know, Jose. I was just thinking last night, like, your job cannot be your life. It shouldn't. But, like, I want to throw my Blackberry, like, out the window. Maybe it might be time for me to, like, move on. You, you a huge part of Juliana's life. The two of you are family. Yeah. She's not your boss, she's your best friend. I know that she'll be hurt. I know that for a fact. I'm so excited, Kat. You don't even know. What's going on? They just told me that I'm doing the uh, Twilight premiere. Mm-hmm. And listen, I'm not a Twihard or anything, although I have read <laughs> some of the books. But my niece, Olivia, is like the biggest lover of Twilight. She's obsessed with Taylor Lautner, so I'm going to get pictures for her. You know what would be amazing? She should come. Oh, my God. She wouldn't be able to sleep for weeks. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Hold on. Let me see if she could come. Olivia is my darling little niece. She's so adorable, and she loves anything Twilight. Meeting Taylor Lautner is like meeting the Pope, if the Pope had ripped abs and a mystic tan. Yeah, hey, go. So you know how Olivia's obsessed with Twilight? Yeah. Well, I'm covering the Twilight premiere. I'm going to be the reporter there. So I was thinking it's on a Monday. What if Olivia flew out and spent the weekend with me and came to the premiere on Monday? Well, she had school on Monday. I don't think it's a good idea. Well, hold on, whoa, whoa, hold on. I remember when I was there, she had a, she was sleeping with the Taylor Lautner poster in her bed. She slept with the poster. Oh, absolutely, now she has a pillow too with his face on it. Aww. <laughs> Take yourself back to when you were 12. Remember you used to love Ozzy Osbourne when we were little? Yeah, a little bit of Ozzy, Boy George, the Bee Gees. That was all over the place. That's embarrassing. Okay, imagine, you know, you're, you're 12 years old and you have the chance to go see Boy George. Okay, and get his autograph and pose with him. Would you die? Uh, yes. Exactly. This would be like the most amazing gift you could ever give your daughter. Okay, well that sounds really great. I mean, I'm all up for it. There's a ton of reasons why I love my job, but one of the best parts of my job is the fact that I can invite my niece to come meet her biggest crush in Hollywood. Say hello to the old guy Ryan, okay, for me? <laughs> love you soon, I love you. All right, love you too. Bye, Posh, bye. OMG, she is going to freak out. I just can't even imagine at that age. And she's gonna look fabulous.
full hair and makeup. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna give your brother a heart attack. I'm gonna introduce <laughs> her to her first pair of four inch heels at 12. Oh, it's never too early. No, I guess not. Never. What's up, Cookie Crumb? How are you, honey? Good, what's going on? I'm glad you're sitting down. Are you ready for this? Matthew quit. What? Just like quit? Mm-hmm. No, no, like, I'll give you a couple months? No. I didn't see it coming at all. When Matthew first came in and said he was quitting, I immediately thought, oh my gosh, is something wrong? You know, and I said, Matthew, I'm sorry, rewind. I thought we were best friends. Like, how can you not tell your best friend this? He just was so weird about it. What did he say? Well, he came in and he's like, you know, I don't want to be an assistant anymore or something. He has complete disregard. He just walked in, quit, and left. This is like crazy. Kid was like a member of the family. I know. Huh. How could Matt, after all these years and all these memories, just do this? Like walk in and just quit one day with no explanation? I have no answers. And I think that we've been together a long time. You know, I, I would think that he would give me those answers. So I'd love to know what's really going on. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. This is our wardrobe room. What do you think about this? For you? For you. For me? Is it too sexy? Oh, yeah. Darn. <laughs> My niece Olivia flew almost 3,000 miles from Potomac, Maryland to Los Angeles to come to the premiere of the latest Twilight movie to meet Taylor Lautner. So I am so excited. And if we're gonna get Taylor Lautner's attention, Olivia needs to look really cute. Look at Juliana. <gasps> That's really cute. Isn't it cute? It's so cute in you. It's like such a fun dress, isn't yeah. it? O-M-G. Look what I just found in your back. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, that's so cute. <laughs> Wait, is this the one you used to sleep with? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia is so shy. I'm scared she's gonna like run away from Taylor Lautner. Wow. Thank mm -hmm. you guys. Oh, you did an course. amazing job. Of a blast. You are living every young girl's fantasy tonight. Oh my God, is she ever. <laughs> this is our little e-platform. This is like the craziest premiere I've ever seen in my entire life. It is the hottest premiere in town. Twihards are going crazy tonight. Kristen, Kristen. Hi, Kristen. I'm on the platform doing interviews, and Olivia's to the side. She's made all these new friends. It's hilarious. Watching them is so funny. They're so into it. They're like playing Spot the Star. Robert's joining me now. What, you're out of breath? I am a little bit, yeah. Oh my god, his British accent. <laughs> Bats, there he is, they're rushing him inside. Oh, no, 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 it gets ugly on this red carpet. You gotta do whatever it takes to get to Taylor Lautner, and when you get him, you better latch onto him tighter than a pair of skinny jeans, baby. Did you guys see Taylor Lautner? Where? Right there. Oh my God. <laughs> so what do you want me to ask Taylor Lautner? His phone number. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hi, Taylor. How are, How are you? Nice to see you. You always look so damn good. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Thank you. I love him. Oh my God. Now, what about the reaction over your chiseled physique? Kind of like, did you think two years ago that that's what so many girls would hone in on? No, and I mean, I don't think that's really what they're honing in on. Yes, they are. <laughs> All right, Taylor, thank you, sweetie, for stopping by. All right, quick break. We'll be right back with so much more. I'm never gonna wash my hands. It is so satisfying seeing Olivia this excited. 
I'm looking at the whole experience through Olivia's eyes and I'm remembering how I felt. I wish Olivia was my daughter. You know, I wish that I could be sharing this experience with my daughter. You're just like your auntie, not afraid to chase celebrities. <laughs> You ready? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's a little weird, you know? I set up a meeting to talk to Matthew for the first time since he quit. A few days have gone by. I feel like maybe it's just a little too early. I don't know what I can even say to him at this yeah. point. I don't even know if I can face him. I gotta say, I'm still hurt, and I just don't know how I'm gonna react when I see him. Should we just leave? I mean, what are we well, he's in. He's sitting in there. I mean, you can't just leave. Juliana's not sure if she wants to go in. I feel for her. I understand. If you want, I'll go in there. I understand your disappointment. I understand how upset you are. I mean. All right. I'll wait for you. All right. Thanks. I got it. All right. Good luck. Hey, Matt. Hi, Belle. Where's Juliana? Juliana's so upset, she couldn't even come in here tonight. What's happening? I, I need to move on. You, you just, you, you have another job and you... I don't have another job. It wasn't what you did. I think it was more the way you did it, Matt. You didn't just quit your job. You quit a friendship. You don't have anything to say? I don't, I don't have anything else to say to you right now. Wow. I feel like she should be here, not you. Hmm. I wish you well. I wish you well, too. I wish you didn't have to go down this way. Bill texted me and told me their meeting was over and to come in, and I was very anxious to go in and hear what happened. <laughs> Strangest thing. Why? Uh, uh, I mean. What happened? He didn't, he just sat there. He had a, like a grin on his face the whole time, and I. I mean, at any point, was, was he like remorseful or felt bad? No, he had, a, he, had a, he had no emotion, nothing. It, it's a big mystery to me. I don't know, the whole thing is just crazy. I mean, the fact that I didn't get any answers and he didn't get any answers, and at least now you know, though, what I was yeah. talking about, that it's like the weirdest thing on earth, so right? Bizarre. It's like he's a totally different person. Yeah. Thanks for doing that for me. Basically, we're just gonna hear him out a little bit, right? Yeah, we're gonna educate ourselves. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Dr. Kaplan is an IVF specialist who comes highly recommended from a few of our friends. Bill and I have done some research and we found that a lot of people that tried IUI who couldn't get pregnant do IVF and get pregnant. We're excited. Some couples will walk in first time and say, I'm ready to go. I'm 35, I've been trying too long. Give me by the highest probability it's working. That's in vitro. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the bottom line, pregnancy rate at your age is roughly 50 to 60% which is dramatic compared to the others. So I like those numbers. So if I were your wife, you would recommend I do it? I would, without hesitation. Mm -hmm. But it's a trade-off. It's more involved. More time, more energy, more emotion, more commitment. It's more aggressive, the stimulation. Okay. So instead of one injectable a day, it's two to three a day. Instead of being on the shots for a week, it's two weeks. <whistles> but at the end of 12 days, we take the eggs out. Mm -hmm. The way that's done, uh, the anesthesiologist puts an IV in your hand. And on the end of the ultrasound is a needle. It goes through the back of the vaginal wall. It's more traumatic, mm -hmm. a little more invasive, but it goes right into the ovary, and that follicle that you saw on the ultrasound, we actually go in with a needle point. Hearing what really is involved with IVF is a lot more than I had signed up for. Some of it sounds pretty scary.
and what comes out of that follicle into a little test tube, there's an egg in there. About three, four hours later, we put the sperm with the egg in the dish. And on the fifth day is typically when we put the embryos back into and hope it implants. It's not a walk in the park. I mean, it's a surgery. It's a major process, and it does some crazy things to your body. So there are quite a few drawbacks to IVF that I had never even considered. You all right? There's just so much going on right now, you know? Like, between Matthew leaving, between you know, Dr. Sabaga telling us we're not pregnant, which was pretty draining. Um, and now meeting an IVF doctor, I mean, it's just a lot, you know what I mean? And um, I just feel totally overwhelmed. It's gonna be okay. Let's get away, let's go out of town, we'll get some massages, we'll, you know, go drink some wine, but we, we make no decision until we get away and clear our heads. So I'm telling you, you, you cannot make a sound decision in this state of mind. I guess we could go away for a couple of days. Good. I'll set it up. Santa Barbara, here we come. Santa Barbara? Mm -hmm. Why Santa Barbara? Well, there's wineries up in that area. Mm. You know, we've got a lot of things to think about, and I don't think this is something that we should just decide overnight. We don't want to make a decision based on emotion. Although it is an emotional process, we want to make sure that we are making the right decision. Come here. Take your boots off, honey. We'll put your feet up. And relax. Tough couple of weeks, Cookie. What's up, sunshine? Hi, honey. How are you feeling? Good. I'm reading the entertainment section. Anything good? Not really. Well. Listen, I don't want you to have to worry about a thing. It's a stress-free weekend. We got a nice day planned for you today. We're gonna go to a little town, it's called Solvang. It's a little Danish town, cute little shopping. I thought it'd be nice to walk around. Just, you know, turn that frown upside down. Exacto mundo. Awesome. I feel like I'm in a life-size miniature golf course. Oh, it's at the windmill. That's the beauty with a road trip to experience different ways of life. Have a bite. You're gonna make me so fat. Well, look at this. You just, you notice how you shove things around. Can I look at it? Oh, okay, well, no, 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 I'm gonna say. Mm. I mean, I mean, I was just saying. Snooze your lips, girl. I like girl. to look at it first. Let me look. Yes, that looks good. <gasps> look at that. Wow. Take a bite. Damn, that looks good. Do you want a little spoon or a fork? Nah. No, just, nah, we're gonna like, eat, you know, I'm gonna eat these like a hamburger. Like, yeah, we're like barbarians. <laughs> That's delicious. The town was so adorable, and as we walked around and checked out all the little shops, my mind definitely, you know, started relaxing a little bit, and... The stress started to melt away. Yeah, it really did. This is really good. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Call me crazy, but it wow. doesn't feel like it's that fattening. Ostrich farm? Yeah, that's right. I thought we were going Come wine on. tasting. You know, well, ostriches we will. poke your eyes out. Right? No, they don't. No, they're crazy Not like these. that. These They'll are, bite your nose off. These are tame. No. There were uh, 600 ostriches running out in the field right next to the highway. Don't I kind of look like an ostrich? You've got a bigger head. <laughs> That's not true. I got it. Animals got hate it. me. Oh my god, they're scary looking. Oh, oh my Look god. at the size of these things. Yes, we like to bite. Why would they put that on a poster? Oh, oh mama. Oh. Son of a gun. Oh my fast. god, honey, I'm scared. I want to get out of here. Hey, mister. Oh my oh. god, he hates me. Watch both hands, both hands, oh honey. Lord. I can't do this. Can you read the instructions? He wants to rip that bowl right out of your hand. Oh my god. You're right, Bill. He's trying to build Yeah, I told you. I told you. Please don't hurt me. They kind of have pretty eyes. They have gorgeous lashes. You have pretty Call lashes. Me. Beautiful. They look like they have the MAC lashes. The, have you ever seen the MAC lashes? No, you don't know what I'm talking about. It feels great just to clear our heads and forget about all the 
craziness that's happening in our lives right now. I think this was just what the doctor ordered. I definitely had a smile back on my face and was really happy. Oh, oh <laughs> that's not funny. That is not funny, Paisan. That's, you're gonna, let me tell you. Oh, you're not gonna know where or when. <laughs> but it's gonna come. This was fun. This was fun, thanks, honey. Yeah. We'll never eat another ostrich burger again, I promise. I'm gonna become a vegetarian, oh my god. <laughs> or not. Andy, one of the best surprises of the trip. Oh, gosh. What is this? No car needed from here on out. Are we getting on those bikes? Because, you know, I haven't been on a bike in, like, 10 years. Chariot awaits. I was trying to just break the habits, try to do new things. So we're going to bike through wine country. Here's the thing. I'm all up for new things, but I'm not dying to crack my head open on asphalt. Aye, aye, aye. Drinking and riding bikes just don't mix. Uh, well, that's why we got you a helmet, honey. OK, well, we have the helmets to oh, keep boy. you safe. All right, how's that doing there with your hair? Good, I have an abnormally large head, so. I have a large head. I was 13 pounds when I was born, and 10 was head. Bottom line is, unless it's an extra, extra large men's, it's not gonna fit on my head. Okay, all right. right. Looks good, okay. <laughs> and away we go. Right. Wait, my helmet's coming off. Oh, crap. All right, hang on, hang on. Keep, keep pedaling, we, we can do this oh, without crap. stopping. I got gotcha. you. OK, that's not a good idea. I, I really don't, gotcha, I I really don't advise you. this. There you go. Thanks. OK, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> then on the palate, you'll get um, stone fruit, apricots, peaches, a little um, orange as well, lime. Very delicious. Yeah. I can thank taste you. the honeysuckle. Yeah. Can you really? It's got that, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Ready for the I'll Tour de you. France. Wow, look how gorgeous this place is. Wow. <coughs> you okay? Went down the wrong pipe. Amateur. Uh oh! <laughs> you know what? What are you doing? You gotta take a little break. Are you sick? Who am I fertilizing a tree? Do not take a picture of me. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. That's not funny. That's not funny. I got it. I'm going to tweet it. This is beautiful, isn't it? I mean, look uh, at that. Oh. Excuse me, I, honey, I've had a lot of wine, if you haven't noticed. I have noticed. Mm. How am I going to get back on that bike, Rancic? Don't worry about it. I'm buzzed, OK? I don't know. Make love to you. OK. I'm going to make love to you in a vineyard. OK. <laughs> Wish. <laughs> Honey! Honey! Ready for the train! Ah! Okay, that's not funny. I don't like that. <laughs> Come on, baby, you can do it. I got. I'm gonna help you. Ready? No! I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Nice, honey. Here. Here. This has been great, honestly. It's a good way to end a kind of crazy couple of weeks, you know? Yeah. Well, speaking of that, we gotta, gotta figure out what we're gonna do next. You know, it's the, it's the end of the second day. We've kind of cleared our heads. We've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot of laughs. and. I think this is probably the time where we should start thinking about the future. I mean, do we go with IVF? You know, we've got to make a decision. What do you think? I just don't know, because, like, it's just such a process on your body, you know? I just, I don't know if I want to put my body through all those hormones and, like, shots and just all that stuff. And then you wait for the big news for a couple of weeks, and then the guy tells you, Sorry, you're not pregnant. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, hopefully it's a different outcome. There's a lot going on right now. I don't know, it's just too much. I don't know if I want to do it.
Um, I mean, listen. I don't know. I don't know what the what the right answer is, but this is priority one to me. You know, I mean, family is. Uh, without that, you got nothing. You got to do what what you're comfortable doing. You know, it's going to require sacrifice on both our parts. So let's just get a plan of action in place. Whether we want to move forward with it or whether we don't. But family's important to you and me. After this beautiful trip to Santa Barbara, it's back to the real world. Bill has to go to Las Vegas for his speaking tour. I'm going back to work, then we're meeting in Chicago. And I think it's good that we're going to be apart couple days, it's going to be good for us to think about making this big decision and taking the next step and just really reflecting alone on what we want. Big decisions have to be made, you know? Big decisions. Big. House of fans ready wow. to see you guys speak. Bill will speak. 20, 25 minutes. Get everyone is that what we're, is that what we're each going to do? Is that yeah. Okay. Well, we're in Vegas, and it's the big event. I've been working on it for several months with Paul Reeder. It's the Take Control of Your Life event. I, I think it's a great lineup, and, and Chris Gardner, I'm a big fan of. They made a movie about him, the movie The Pursuit of Happiness, in which Will Smith played his life. And then James Van Prague is a spiritualist and a medium, and he's someone who can help people get focused on visualizing what they want out of life. I'm, I'm anxious, I'm excited, I'm a little bit nervous. If this event is successful, we're gonna be doing these events all over the country, and it's gonna give me the the luxury of doing what I love to do. I got a lot riding with this. Now, how old is your son, Chris? 28. 28. 28, and I think he's finally getting it. Two years ago, he became a parent. Mm. And all of a sudden, you start seeing, like, oh, it's not all about me. Julian and Bill are trying to get pregnant. Are you trying right now? Yeah. 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 He calls pregnancies, too. I, mean, I, I call pregnancies, too. If I think yeah. well, all the time is right. She's a little scared right now. I'm a little fearful that maybe she's not going to be able to get pregnant. Take the pressure yeah. off, because that's not a good thing to have when you're trying to get pregnant. Yeah. You got to change fertility doctor? We just did, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you hear that? It's amazing. I think you will have two kids, eventually. Huh. Two. They'll be doing with two kids. Definitely freaked me out a little bit. I was a believer in James, but now I'm a really a believer in James. Uh, and, and definitely uh, excited for the future with Juliana, because if he's right, good things are going to come for us. That's, that's good to know. It's good to know. Hopefully they're twins. No. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? I don't care if you work in corporate America or if you work for yourself. When you think like an entrepreneur, you think like an owner and you take ownership. And remember this, tough times don't last, but tough people do. Life is very, very simple. The reason I think people are unhappy is because they're not living their lives, they're living other people's lives. You can always pursue happiness and you can start where you are. We packed the house, Paul's got us a sellout like he promised he would, and the people loved it. It was a hit. It was better than we could have ever anticipated it being. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. Balancing this tour schedule is not gonna be easy with Juliana and us trying to have a baby, but that's priority one. And whatever I have to do, I'm gonna have to do. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure, thank you for coming. out of nowhere on me just suddenly. And the last time we were supposed to meet, I just couldn't do it. Now I'm finally gonna see him for the first time since he quit face to face, and I'm hoping to get some answers. Hey, Matthew. Hi. What's up? How's it going? How are you? How are you doing? Okay. So what's going on? Me leaving and quitting my job, I didn't do it in the best way, but like, um, like my life was about you. And I just felt like suffocated and like, then I started to think crazy and think, oh my God, 
what if she wants to keep me as her personal assistant with the baby? And like, they keep talking baby, baby, and you know, me with baby and yeah. all that stuff. No. So I thought, oh my God, like, I'm gonna go be going into my 30s and I'm gonna be a damn manny. Yeah, but Matt, you should you could have told me this. You know what I mean? You and I have been together for three years. In those three years, did I ever not want you to succeed at whatever you wanted to do? Did I not say to you, Matthew, if you ever want to leave, let me know. I will move the world for you. I will get you a job if I can get you. I will call every contact I know. Let me help you. For you not to tell me as just a friend where you're going or what you're thinking of was very hurtful. And I'm sorry about that. It wasn't that you quit the job. It's more that, you know, you were my best friend, you know, and you totally just walked out. You just kind of quit our friendship and my life, you know, and our life together. But, you know, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm glad though we spoke and got some answers at least, you know? I think you're an amazing person. I do. And I want the best for you, Matt, you know? I do. I Don't do. cry. No, it's fine. But seriously, you're an amazing person, and even though I'm upset you left me, I do love you. And I hope you achieve everything you want to achieve. I don't know. I'm sorry for both of us, you know, that it ended this way. Best of luck with everything, seriously. You too. And, you know. I'll see you around. All right. Bye, Matt. Bye, Chief. Bye. I'm glad that I finally came face to face with Matthew. I am. Even though I didn't get the answers that I expected, um, that's okay. Life's good. Life is great. What's going on with you? I'm dying to know. Well, just tons of work, as always. We definitely learned the technical side of IVF from Dr. Kaplan, but I wanted to get together with someone who's experienced it. Trisha is a good friend of mine. She knows quite a bit about IVF since she just went through it. We did do IUI recently. We did, we did yeah. And um, we were so sure we were pregnant. And we go in and he's like, you're not pregnant. So it was very, it was very disappointing, you know? And that was just IUI, which isn't as aggressive as IVF. So now we decided, okay, this is a good time to do it. We go to the doctor and it is tough. It's not that easy. So you've been through the shots. What are they like, honestly? Like, the don't, don't sugarcoat it. Number one, there's mixing of, of uh, the vials and the different meds, which can become stressful if you're not used to doing things like that. How many shots is it? One a um, day? Some more? days were like three, three a day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You get hot flashes, you get the whole thing. Think about like PMS, but times 100. Does the egg retrieval hurt? Uh, it's a little bit painful. Really? Not fun, no. You have to be at a point in your life where you are ready to go through that process because it is not for the faint of heart. And Trisha made me realize that, that this is serious. Tomorrow I'm seeing Bill. He's coming back from Vegas and I'm hoping that I'll have a decision made. Wow. Yeah, it's a commitment. <sighs> wow. Tough couple months, kid. It really has been. We gotta figure stuff out, honey. Yeah. I just feel like there's all this like new information coming our way that I just don't think we were prepared for. I feel like we threw around the letters IUI and IVF like they were nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's so easy, everyone does it, but I don't think we realized how intense these procedures are. And when they don't work, the disappointment, the heartache, and just the whole process, physically what it does to you and mentally, it's just, yeah. it's a lot. It's an emotional roller coaster. It is. And now that it's a reality to start IVF, I just, I'm scared, you know? I don't know when it comes down to it. I don't know if I want to do it. 
I'm the optimist, and I think we're gonna make it happen one way or the other. It didn't happen this time, it'll happen next time. I don't think there's gonna be a next time. We've been trying for a while now, and I just wanna give up at this point. Yeah, you can't. Can well, you can now, you know, you can. Just physically, what I have to go through for this IVF, you know? Yeah. They, th there's a reason you get ultrasounds every day. There's side effects. You can overstimulate mm -hmm. your ovaries and God forbid cause permanent damage. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just, I just wish we didn't have to do it. You know, I'm here to support you and, and, and you know, give you my advice. The ultimate decision rests with you because it's your body. I don't know if I can do this.